Hello. Ha. Top of the morning, friends and family. Ooh, it's beautiful light out here, and that's why we're filming out here. We got my buddy Calvin visiting. You may remember him from such classics as this video right here or this video right here. The funny thing is you've always been on uncuts. It's always uncut. It's always uncut. You yeah. know, one day you'll get you on an edited video. It'll be. I know. Then we can get rid of the bloopers and the moments where we start laughing forever. So. No, 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 no. Laughter is good. We like laughter around here. We're we're happy about laughter. So, what we got going on today? Well, first of all, if this is your first time here, once a week we upload a beautifully edited cinematic masterpiece to this channel. This video is uncut. And in today's uncut, I, I mentioned my buddy Calvin is visiting, and we're gonna we're gonna face this one until I would like to use the sunlight to show the awesome iridescence that this snake has. It's tough tough thing about filming this light is, um, you know, when you look when you have the sun behind you, everything blows out, but then when you put it in front of you, it doesn't. So we're doing something with this scrub python. I probably already talked about it in the title. I, don't even, I have no idea what I titled this video at the time that I'm filming this. Any ideas for a title for this video, Calvin? Ooh, um, breeding loans, question mark? <laughs> All right, <laughs> breeding loans it is, question mark. I really wanted to capture some of the iridescence on this snake before we get into the, before we get deep into it and I thought the sun would, would do it pretty well. It's probably my angles are, oh, there it is. Oh, there it is right there. Rainbow right on top of that snake. Get, get that iridescence. It's all about getting the right angle in the sunlight to get the iridescence on the snake. And if this snake was a lot darker, it's a pretty light snake and he's pretty fired up right now, which makes him a lot lighter. You know, you hold him in the sun as much as possible. Look, look at that, see? Turn, yeah, look there at all the iridescence right there. So the iridescence shows up a lot more on darker snakes. And again, he's pretty fired up. So it's kind of hard to see how much iridescence there is, but but if, especially through the camera. But you can see a pr pretty good amount with your eyes, right, Calvin? Oh yeah, it's over the entire body, pretty much. That's the nice part about these pattern lists too. I mean, most scrubs will have that anyways, um, but pattern lists seem to have always a little bit more. Um, the southern type scrubs they always have um, a fair amount of iridescence running through the entire body, uh, which is just a, a huge reason why other people, why most people really like these. Um, but there's just something about scrubs that's, um, it's completely different than any other snake you'll, you'll really get a chance to work with. So um, they're definitely my favorite species and I couldn't be happier working with the ones uh, that I already have. And then um, taking this guy for a little bit, so. Yeah, so let's talk about that. So tra Travis, <laughs> I, I, I was about to say Travis because Travis is, my buddy Travis Johnson over at Living Legless Reptiles is to date the only person I've ever done any kind of breeding loan with whatsoever. And there's a reason for that, is that I really love Travis and we're really good friends and I know that nothing would ruin our friendship. Um, so I've got that same feeling about Calvin. And um, I always recommend, we've talked about this on the channel before, but some people recommend never doing breeding loans ever. And I would also agree with that, depending on who you're doing the breeding loan with. You know, if it's just like more of a business thing, even if you're writing up like a super solid contract, I just don't think it's well. I think that the best way to do a breeding loan is if you're doing it with somebody where you don't feel like you need to have any kind of contract. Now, this is gonna vary from person to person. Some people, maybe yes, you should have a contract, but again, my opinion, if you feel like you need a contract for a breeding loan, my opinion is just don't do it because then you know something goes wrong and even though you have a contract right now then it you're starting to entertain it involving like lawyers to go over legal stuff because you have a contract and that just sounds to me horrible so basically what i'm expecting out of this breeding loan because because if you guys have followed the story of what's going on with the scrub pythons for me i got a pair back in 2016 that i was planning to breed and turned out you know after i raised them for five six years that they were both males. <laughs> I was like, dang it. So I do have a female Southern um, that I'm planning to have him with at some point, but she's just not even close to ready. So, uh, but Calvin has a girl that's like ready now, a Southern. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity, A. B, so what I'm expecting out of Calvin in this breeding loan is, is nothing. 
I'm not expecting anything. Uh, it would be nice if we got some baby scrub pythons out of it, some baby southerners. That would be fantastic. If for some reason something happens and, you know, there's some horrible accident takes place, who knows what, you know, you never know what could ever happen, and my snake perishes, then I will expect nothing like, I won't be like, okay, well, you owe me now, bro. Like, and that's the mentality that I recommend going into breeding loans with because it's not worth ruining a friendship or ruining a relationship over. And just to expect that the worst could possibly happen and that's just the way it goes with living animals. Um, that, that's my opinion on how to do a breeding loan. There's the, again, the whole other side of thing, I'm sure with like horses and, and dogs and stuff, there's probably some kind of contracts that people do, but I wouldn't do that with those animals either. It, it would just be simply like, okay, we're, we're expecting, we're gonna hope for the best and prepare for the worst. And if the worst happens, then we knew that that was a possibility and there's nothing that is going to come from it other than being like, dang, too bad that happened. Um, anyway, how do you feel about that? Pretty spot on. Um, Brian and I, I'd like to say, gotten pretty close over the past few years. Um, definitely lots of conversations and, uh, and visits have kind of gone into this. And, you know, I mean, like he said, at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's not about what you're doing. It's about who you're working with and who you're trusting with your animals, your time, your money. Um, but at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's for the hobby, you know, for, for things that we all love and we all jumped into this uh, for. So, um, but definitely do be careful and, uh, and, and who you work with and uh, the things you do and the, th the things you say too. Um, so, but I do appreciate Brian so very much for uh, giving me this opportunity. Um, it's going to be, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a learning experience. Um, and, uh, it's one step closer to kind of getting the job done. So thank you, Brian. Thank you. Dude. That, that iridescence is finally showing up nice. I love the light. This is my favorite time of day to film. Sun's getting close to going down and just like, I haven't filmed outside enough in recent months. So I'm going to get outside and film a lot more. Um, especially since it's, <laughs> dude this is winter you imagine what's yeah. happening in the most of the rest of north america right now it's not this nope. <laughs> oh it looks good all right guys well that does it for this video uh stay tuned for this weekend when we have one of our beautifully edited masterpieces up and in the meantime y'all take care of yourselves take care of each other and we'll see you on the next one aloha